Okay, so uh, so like most of my videos, I typically do uh, fixing videos on on these. Uh, I'm not doing a fixing like a, a repair video on this transmission. Uh, there is uh, it's it's a really large job, and I just uh, doing it my by myself. So I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to slow myself up that, that far by videotaping it, but uh, when I was doing research into whether or not I was going to rebuild this transmission or pay someone to rebuild it for me, uh, I took a lot of factors into um, into uh, just just thought about a lot of different things, and nobody really broke it down how much it costs to um, to go ahead and rebuild one of these. So I'm going to break it down into what I have in it personally, uh, what I am doing to it, what I'm not going to do to it for specific reasons, and I'll show you. Um, I called around and I got a few different prices on uh, either buying a remanufactured transmission or taking the one I have out and taking it someone, to someone to get rebuilt. And uh, the cheapest I found was $1,853 to have it rebuilt. Now, having it rebuilt, uh, it would have a shift kit in it, from what I understand. It would have a shift a shift kit in it, a rebuilt torque con converter, um, all new seals, new clutches, new bands. Uh, cheapest I found to have my own rebuilt was 1900 Oh, and the servo bores updated. So, uh, I feel like that's too much. This Explorer right there, it's got 150,000 miles on it, and I think $2,000 for me to do a job, uh, for, for me to take the transmission out and put it back in myself and still have $2,000 into it is too much. So uh, what I did, I took it out myself. It took me about, uh, with some a couple, you know, a couple bolts that didn't want to come out and a few things that fought me along the way. I probably had seven, around seven hours into it, um, off and on to get it out. Taking it apart was pretty easy. There's plenty of videos on the internet uh, to teach you how to do that. Um, my, my biggest holdup with this was uh, the servo bore. If you're looking into this, you'll, I'm sure you'll, you will read or watch videos about it. The servo bores get worn and they let uh, fluid pass and then the uh, transmission, the computer for the transmission adapts, ends up upping the pressure to the servos. Things get messed up. You, so you really should uh, have the the servos bored out and sleeves put in, which uh, I have. Right in here, there's a uh, two servo <coughs> sleeves. So what I was going to do, I was going to try to freehand uh, ream. A guy at work, he had uh, had the reamers I, I need to, uh, it's a 9 16 and a 5 8 uh, reamer. He had them. I was thinking about freehanding them. Um, but then I thought, I thought against it. I thought about it again. I, I'm doing this myself, so I'm going to save a lot of money in the long run. Just doing it myself. Um, I'll get into some dollars and cents here. Uh, I have it all written on this master rebuild kit here. So uh, the master rebuild kit was two hundred and six dollars, and that comes with the bands that I need. Everything I basically need to rebuild it: seals, bands, clutches. And then there is some assembly goo. It's just uh, assembly lube. This stuff. I got the uh, the green here. It's a firm pack. Uh, I read a couple things. People really recommend this stuff. It was nine dollars. And then uh, I couldn't have done it this job without a transmission jack. You almost have to have it. Um, I don't know if you're young and you got a bunch of buddies to help you. Maybe you could do it without it, but going back in it's going to be a big pain. Harbor Freight transmission jack. Uh, there's one right here. You sure if you can see it or not, but uh, $160 for that. Um, this tube of Loctite. 
It's a high strength sleeve retainer. That's for the. Uh, that is for when you install these. You have to put this this on nine bucks. Uh, servo bore kit. I like I was saying. I had the I have the reamers. A friend of mine at work had them. I'm gonna try to freehand it, but then I thought against it because I don't want to uh, put several hundred dollars of parts in this transmission and ruin it because I tried to freehand uh, the 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 bore holes. So ended up buying this off of eBay. It was two hundred and forty dollars, and we'll get back. I'll get back to this later. 240 bucks for that. And then the fluid, uh, eight quarts of Mercon. Uh, this specific transmission uses Mercon. Uh, the 5R55W uses Mercon 4, which is even more expensive than that. But I have uh, $32 in the eight, eight quarts of fluid for that. And then when I tore this apart, the band. Uh, the band is what broke, what caused all this to happen, and you can see how the band, or the, this broke off of the band, and that started this whole thing. Now, when you look at these bands, I'm not sure if you could see this, but they're in pretty good shape. Uh, I do believe that this transmission had probably another 50 or, eight, well, uh, at least another 50,000 miles to go before anything would have ever had to been done with it. Um, but that band broke and it forced my hand upon this. So when that broke, this servo or uh, yeah, the servo, which the servo, this, this is the servo that slides in and out of what you need to bore. This got, uh, it broke. I don't know, the band caught, I guess, or something along those lines and pulled, pulled that in or pushed in and it broke it. So I got $35 in that uh, to get a new new uh, servo off of eBay. So the grand total I have, or, or what, what it would cost me to this point with everything, including the servo, is uh, $691. So I'm sitting at just, just below $700 all in all to do this myself. Now, Keep in mind, that's with the jack and the servo board kit. Now, uh, that jack, I borrowed uh, a guy, another guy I work, I work with like a hundred guys, uh, we're mechanics. So I try to be resourceful. I didn't want to spend $160. I only do a transmission once every 10 years. So I didn't want to buy my own transmission jack. That's a uh, 160 bucks. He already had it because he just did a transmission on his Cummins clutch went out of it. So he let me borrow it. Uh, I'm sure he would let me borrow it for free. I'm gonna end up giving him like 40 bucks or something just just for letting me. You know, he he paid 160 for it so he could do his transmission. I would have had to pay 160. So I'm gonna throw him throw him some money to offset what he paid for it. You know, when I give it back. Um, so minus the jack, you're at uh, $531. Uh, another way I'm going to try to save money on this is this the servo bore kit that I bought, even though I have all the stuff. Uh, this comes with three sets of these. So you can do three transmissions without having to buy any of these. Now I bought these because I was going to try to freehand them, so I didn't uh, these aren't in the price uh, that I gave you, but I had another $35 in these two. But then I bought this, it came with it. So I am, once I am done with this, I'm, I'm not going to use the reamer because I have the reamers. Um, the only thing I'm going to use out of this kit is the, uh, is the guides. So basically this is still going to be new from, you know, almost new. Uh, I'm, I'll just be using the guides. So I'm going to try to get probably, I pay 240 for it. I'm going to try to shoot for 200 back out of it. Uh, I'm going to sell it on eBay. eBay's going to take their probably a little chunk. Uh, 
PayPal will take a small chunk of that. So I end up getting like 180, but um, I'm, I'll be recouping some money there. So let's say I get 200 all said and done back out of this kit, uh, which is feasible even if you do it and use the uh, use a couple of these two of these bores. If you order the kit, you use it. If someone would have had a used kit on eBay, I would have bought it uh, versus buying the $240 new kit because I only I'm only going to use this once. So, uh, you know, check eBay, see if you can get a deal on this stuff. Um, I know mine will be on there in about a week or so. So, um, that takes me down. If I get 200 out of this, 200 back out of this, I will be at 331 at that point. So, for a job that it would was going to cost me $1,900 just to get the transmission, I'm down to 331 right now. Um, and then... Oh, I did. I did factor, I guess. Oh, no, no. And then this, uh, the servo, the actual servo that was broken. That was another 35 bucks that was in this total that I'm, that I'm telling you. So we were at 331 um, and the servo, that's with the servo being broken. If the servo wouldn't have been broken, then all I would have needed to do would be replace the band. I would be at 296 so under $300 for this job. Now, I'm not replacing the uh, I'm not replacing the torque converter and I'm not uh, I'm not going to break into the pump to do anything into that. I'm not going to do a shift kit. And my reasoning behind this all is prior to that band breaking, um, I wasn't having any any problems with it shifting harsh or anything like that. Reverse work, everything seemed to work just fine. The band broke led to all this this may be your your uh what, what what's happening for you also so i'm not going to replace the torque converter i'm going to use the old one uh i am not going to rebuild the uh the solenoid i'm not going to get a new solenoid pack and i'm not going to put a shift kit in the uh, manifold there so and that my reasoning behind that is because when i took all these bands out and everything this is the reverse band it has a ton of life left on it. Same with every other band. Uh, the magnet inside the pan wasn't in very bad a shape. It had uh, a little bit of fuzz to it, but nothing like out of control. So due to the fact that I didn't have a whole bunch of wear, nothing showed significant signs of damage uh, when I took it out, other than the specific thing that, you know, the, the, the band breaking and that uh, servo being broken. Had I had more damage shown or these bands would have been wiped out and not had any uh, any material left on them, all the clutches look decent. Had all of that been uh, in worse shape, I may have put a new torque converter on or done a shift kit or put a new solenoid pack. Actually, I wouldn't have done the shift kit or solenoid pack because you could do those after the fact. Once it's back on, if you're doing this yourself and you're looking to save money, you can access the, you could put a shift kit in it without having to pull the transmission. You can put a solenoid pack on without having to do the transmission. The things you can't do without having to pull the transmission is a torque converter or the solenoid bore kit. You have to do that prior to. So that's why I'm doing, doing the solenoid bore kit because uh, it's a high failure rate um, and it's out right now. Torque converter, I debated. I'm just not going to do it because I don't think it's going to go bad in the next 50,000 miles. That's what I'm shooting to get out of this once it's rebuilt. 50,000 more miles on the vehicle total. It's got 150 right now, so if I get another 50 out of it, 200,000 miles, if it has to go to the junkyard at that point, so be it. I won't be won't be upset with it. I just don't think it's in uh, bad enough shape yet. There's no rust on it. It runs good. It's uh, got third row seats, leather, Eddie Bauer edition. It's worth keeping to me. Uh, a car payment for a new SUV like this would end up costing me probably, I don't know, whatever I put down. Still probably 300 bucks a month for four years. So I'm not ready to get into that right now. Um, we've got other things we're working on the house. I'd rather put that money towards that. So this is what I'm doing. Hopefully I'll have it done this weekend. Sorry, I didn't make a video of uh, removal and installation, but I have a lot going on right now. It's about a week before Christmas. Um, it's done enough time to do that. 
but I did want to make this video so you know what you're getting into if you decide to possibly attempt something like this uh, on your own. I have a lot of tools, um, and what I have, uh, I didn't buy anything special for this. You'll need a swivel, uh, standard metric socket set, uh, nothing bigger than a 19, 18 millimeter, um, basic hand tools, uh, and then that jack. That was basically the one thing I didn't have that I needed. So uh, if you're a do-it-yourselfer, uh, didn't take, this wasn't hard. None of this was hard. It's just uh, a challenge because of, I live in uh, Ohio right now. There's uh, It's spent its whole life in between Pennsylvania and Ohio. Road salt corrodes these things. It's uh, you know pretty old. It's uh, 15 years old at this point. So you got to start with dealing with things like that if, if you know it comes to where you're at. Not too bad. Not too bad to get out. Did it all by myself. So I hope this video helps you. If it does, please subscribe to my channel. That helps me out. And uh, thanks for watching.